Dear students, welcome uh, to the lecture of uh, Control System Engineering. Uh, till now, we have covered uh, in the three units the topics related to general control system which are present, which are prevailing and then we have seen different ways or applications by which we can see different types of control systems. And again, in the secondary aspect, we have seen the way of doing the mathematical modeling of a system by ways of representing the systems in terms of block diagram and signal flow graph techniques. In the next unit for analysis phase, we have seen the transient response analysis for first order systems and second order systems. And in the final stage, now we are coming up to the part of the next stage of analysis, which is called as the stability and root locus analysis. So, today we will see uh, the first aspect of stability that is nothing but the way by which we are going to define a particular system is stable, unstable or marginally stable. When we want to define stability, the stability term can be defined in two different aspects. When we say that, when we so go for a particular system prevailing over here, in this aspect in the first figure you see a general system which is represented by a block diagram representation where R of S is nothing but the input, C of S is nothing but the output of a system and G of S representing the forward gain block and H of S representing the feedback path. Now, when we define a system in form of a block diagram representation, the stability of a system now we can define in terms of the way by which we are going to see whether the system approaching towards a particular value. So, this value definition parameters will again be based upon what type of input you are going to provide for the system. So, if you are going to see in this figure over here that the input provided for the system is a step input and the output behaves in such a fashion that it tries to reach whatever has been desired for. So, whenever it reaches the desired value, we say that the system is a stable system. So, in short, we can say a system is stable if the natural response approaches 0 or the particular value as time approaches infinity. Exactly opposite of that will be a system is unstable if the natural response approaches infinity as time approaches infinity. So, you can see in the second uh, way of representation shown over here, the desired value of a step input considered as 0 to 1, but the output is going to vary from a particular value which is going on continuously increasing and therefore, the system is said to be unstable. The third aspect of stability comes over here in terms of marginal stability. Now, the systems are said to be marginally stable if the natural response neither decays nor grows. So, in the first aspect, we have seen that the response is decaying. In the second aspect, we are seeing that the response is growing. But if it is in between these two concepts, we say that the system is marginally stable. A system, the second way by which we can go for defining a system stability is that a system is stable if every bounded input yields a bounded output. So, in the first aspect we have seen for a step input, a bounded input was provided and the output also tends to be a bounded one. But for the second one we see that in spite of our bounded input, the output is not bounded. So, this becomes a second way of representation of system stability and instability. If you want to define the system in terms of stability, we can go for other aspects also. We can go for defining the pools and zeros of a system. Representation of a general system will be in this format, a forward gain block, a feedback gain block, where the value is h of s is 1. And when you want to define the overall transfer function of a system, the value will be depending upon c of s by r of s. And we define this as a closed loop transfer function. Here, this to block representation on the top represents the forward gain block and here the system representation is in, in terms of a closed loop system. Now, when you are going to define in terms of a open loop or closed loop systems, stability can be defined with the help of the pool definitions. So, a stable system will have a closed transfer loop functions with the pools in the left half of the s-plane. Now, when I say it is the left half of the s-plane, the things will be that we have to consider a plane which is made up of a real axis and imaginary axis where when the pools are lying on the left half, the system is said to be stable. When the system is unstable when we say that the, at least one of the pool is going in the right half of the s-plane, the system becomes unstable. 
The third aspect of marginal stability comes in picture when we define that a multiple number of poles or a pair of poles is lying on the imaginary axis. So that is going to define the way by which the way the poles are represented in a s-plane, the system can be a stable, unstable and marginal stable. Now the way to define this by just preparing a particular type of uh, consideration over here in terms of a Routh Hurwitz criterion. Now this criterion defines just by preparing a particular type of uh, data table by a particular systematic manner and interpreting depending upon the values which are present in terms of the table and then also we can go for predicting the uh, number of pools. Now this method requires two steps. The first part is to generate the data table that is called as a route table and second part is interpret the table to determine the number of pools in the left half and the right half of the plane. If you take into a consideration an example, so if I just as a representative example in terms of uh, the alphabets given in terms of the coefficients of a uh, equation in the numerator polynomial given as n of s, the denominator polynomial given in terms of a uh, equation. Now, whenever I want to define the particular equation in terms of the transfer function of a system that is c of s by r of s, this is nothing but a block representation that is a numerator polynomial divided by denominator polynomial defines the transfer function of a system. Now, when we have a closed loop system in this case, we can say that the, the denominator is going to define particular values of the roots or called as the poles of a system of a closed loop system which are going to be represented in a particular way. This representation is called as preparation of the routes table. So what we do in this part is that we arrange the characteristic equation that is nothing but the denominator of the route uh, of the stable system and then we say that a particular aspect that the power s raised to 4, s raised to 3, s raised to 2, s raised to 1 and s raised to 0 that is in nothing but in a decreasing order of the coefficients of s power and the coefficients of the particular considerations will be considered in the first row. So we arrange the terms as s raised to 4, 3, 2, 1 and 0 and then the first row preparation is very crucial. We start with the first coefficient of s raised to 4 that is nothing but a4. So we start with a4 coefficient, then we skip 1 that we go from s raised to 4 to s raised to 2, we say we take that coefficient that is a2 we represent as a second element and henceforth we go on skipping one and go on entering as a naught as the final element. For s to the power 3 row, again we start with the coefficient of s3 row that is a3 and then we skip one, we go for a1 as a coefficient and next element, there is no element therefore we take it as 0. So this is the first important step in preparation of the route table in order to go for preparing the two rows of route table. And after this, we proceed in this format. The remaining rows are to be fulfilled by considering this particular format when we have these two rows in front of us that is s raised to 4 row and s raised to 3 row. The s square row, the first element preparation is nothing but considering to be the two elements which are above the row whose element we are going to prepare that is nothing but b1. Therefore, it will be in terms of modulus outside minus sign that is a4, a2, a3 and a1. So, these four components we have taken and divided by the first column element that is nothing but a3 and that result what we get defines the first element in s2 row that is nothing but b1. Similarly, we go for preparing the second element that is b2 in s2 row and therefore again we take two elements on the left that is a4 and a3 and a0 and a1 with the modulus divided by again the first column element that is a3. So, defining parameter always remains the first column element we get the next element as b2 and hence we go on completing this row that is s2. For s1, we consider the same path, we consider two rows above it that is s2 and s3 row and accordingly we go on preparing the s1 row as c1, second element obviously it becomes 0, third element obviously becomes 0 because we have got 0 elements in the modulus. And the final element that is nothing but the S0 row always will be defined by the last element in the characteristic equation that will be defined by D1. So once we have this all the list of all elements in the route table, next part is a prediction on the basis of the first column elements in the route table. We will see what that analysis is. So we take one example over here. Here we define a forward gain block as 1000 upon S plus 2, S plus 3, S plus 5. And when we go on defining in terms of the transfer function of a system that is C of S by R of S, we are going to define as G of S upon 1 plus 
g of s h of s that is not because, because we have got a negative feedback. So, we get this uh, particular transfer function and as I have previously told you that the denominator now is going to define the characteristic equation. This equation we are going to pick it up and we have to define the route table. So, this s raised to the power 3 plus 10 s square plus 31 s plus 1303 will be considered as the route table elements. We will prepare the route table element. So, we have arranged it according to the decreasing order of s3, s2, s1 and s0 and then we have defined the row 1 and row 2 as discussed previously. We have prepared s1 row and s0 row. So, finally, we will see that over here the first column in this route table is very important that is nothing but defined as plus 1, plus 1, minus 72 and we have got last element as 103. So, if you observe in the first column that the sign change consideration is an important parameter in order to define the system stability. So, in the interpretation of this route table, we can say that the number of roots of the polynomial that are in going to lie in the right half of this plane will be equal to the number of sign changes. Now, what is the meaning of that sign changes? Now, in this part, we will define over here, we will observe that from 1 to 1, it is nothing but one sign change, not observed because this is plus, this is plus. The second part, again, we go from plus to minus. So, this is the first part where the first sign change takes place from plus to minus and from minus 72, again, we go to plus 103, that is the second sign change. So, here we can in interpret that we have got two sign changes and therefore, out of s to the power 3 means we will have three roots. So, out of three roots, two roots will lie in the right half of this plane and one will lie in the left half of this plane. So, this is a complete interpretation of the given control system for to define the root stability, the route stability criterion on that basis. Thank you.